What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. It's an early morning and I am officially at the first campground that I've ever brought my van to. I've had this thing for over two months now and since I picked it up I've been completely off the grid. I would just get water when I need to and I've never plugged into electricity to use anything in here because pretty much everything is self-sufficient other than the air conditioner. I'm down outside of Atlanta, Georgia right now, so I figured it was going to be super hot when I got here. I was just in the Carolinas for the past like week and a half, and it was brutally hot. So I figured, hey, I'm coming here. I don't really know where I'm gonna go. Might as well test out how this thing works at a campground. So I'll show you guys a lot of this stuff in more detail today, but right now I'm currently hooked up to 30 amp power. They also have a 50 amp plug here. This thing, of course, runs on 30. And because of that, I can use all of the electricity, including the stove top and the air conditioner without having to worry about depleting my batteries. I've already been here for two days and I've been filming some other videos, but today I figured I might as well give you guys more of a walk around of the van and show you kind of how it is staying in one of these things pretty much full time. Now with everything that I have going on inside of the van, this is probably my favorite thing so far. Mobile workstation on the outside of the van, especially since they are calling for showers at some point today. Working outside like this is probably the greatest thing ever. I did pick up a jetpack yesterday, so I have Wi-Fi now, which means I can upload videos while I'm on the move. Super, super convenient. You guys are starting to get a glimpse at some of the gear that I bring along with me. REI folding, light chair, this thing is super convenient as well. And then we got a 10 foot awning here. If anyone comes over, that thing stays dry. It's a really cool setup. Now if I come around to this side of the van, here you can see the hookup when this thing is hooked up to 30 amp. When this blue light is lit, that means there is power going into the van. Ooh, check out that spider. Over here is the hookup. I do have a surge guard on here. This is super important when you are plugging into electric that you are unfamiliar with. You plug this thing in first and then it will tell you if there is anything wrong, like an open ground or reverse polarity, something like that. And then underneath here you have the 30 amp, 50 amp, and then just some regular wall outlets. I do also have adapters that I can plug into either of them, but since this thing runs on 30, it's best to just leave it on 30. Now, one thing to note is that when you are plugging into the power, the only thing that you're really adding additional is the use of the air conditioner. Everything else, including the stovetop, can run off of the batteries, which is powered by the solar, but the stovetop does suck a lot of power, so that is something that I try not to use unless I like really need to cook and I'm starving. I really haven't tested the limits of it. I think I probably could cook more than I think, but for the most part, I just don't. Now, when I am connected to power, I simply did this just to use the air conditioning, although I really don't need to. It's not super hot out like I thought. I am under some nice shade, which is good. But one thing to note is that you should use 30 if your unit runs on 30. I do also have an adapter that I could go from 50 into 30, and that supposedly is safe. The van will only take the power that it needs. And I can also plug into a standard wall outlet and use the inverter to power things like charging camera batteries and my MacBook and a Bluetooth speaker, things like that. But one thing that you do not want to do is try to use the air conditioning while you're using power under that 30 amp plug. When I am plugged into that, it may draw enough power just to run, but when something is running at a level where it does not have enough power, it's going to shorten the lifespan of that unit. So in a pinch, you may be able to run the AC off of a standard wall outlet, but I would recommend against doing that. So now for the rest of the morning, I'm going to finish up this edit, get it uploaded, that way you guys can see it tomorrow. And then maybe I'll go over just a little bit of some of the gear that I've brought with me. All right guys, I just finished editing the video on the life card that is already out on the channel now by the time you're watching this video. 
Pretty cool little gun. I said cool like a million times in that video. Now let's go in here and talk about some of the cool little like gadgets that I brought with me to make my life easier. Starting with one that you see right here actually. If you're someone who uses a MacBook and you are charging it every single day like myself, this is something that stays right here inside of my EDC bag and it has been with me pretty much everywhere since I bought it. This is called the Sidewinder. I know a lot of you guys like gadgets and technology and stuff too, so this thing has been a huge help to me. What it does is it takes the actual brick and then the larger charging cable as well as a small one and it sort of winds them up together. You simply twist it like this. And right now my computer is charging outside but it keeps everything in a nice neat little package that way you have the most extension of a charger cable. And then when you want to use it you simply grab each end, pull it like this and it unravels keeps everything nice and neat super big plus another thing for the van that is also very helpful especially on kind of like humid muggy days like this when I have everything open all of the windows the screen door I have my exhaust fan running it's also nice to keep air moving throughout this thing so I bought a bunch of different USB fans to kind of keep things cool in here so right up here above my inside desk where I edit videos from time to time I have this little USB fan that plugs directly in and then it has a little rigid metal cable here to kind of point it in the direction that you want it to go. This was another cool Amazon pickup. It's actually used for like computers and I guess to put in behind like servers maybe or maybe in like a desktop computer to keep airflow going. But what's cool about it is since I have USB ports up here, I can simply plug this thing in, angle it right towards myself, and then you have a constant fan blowing some nice cool air on you. Because of this position, it also kind of pulls in air from this window and that is one thing that I would highly recommend. Now moving back to the bedroom area of the van. Let me turn some lights on here. I've got another one right here and what's very convenient about this one is that it is a desk fan. So you can clamp it to different things. I of course clamp it right here on the edge of the doorway into the bathroom and you can position it 360 degrees. You can spin it this way and this way. There's two different modes, both low and high. And again, this runs off a of USB, so I have it plugged into the wall right over here. And this is something that, again, as long as I'm plugged into power, even if I'm not plugged into power, I can keep this thing running full time. With this little window in the back here, it sort of helps air circulate back into this area because there isn't a whole lot going on. And then that sort of completes my whole bedroom type of setup. Over here, I have a flashlight, my EDC light, actually, the Olight S2R Baton 2. I like having that back here at night rather than turning on these super bright lights and these reading lights, which are also very bright as well. And then also back here, I have this little phone clamp thing, which I showed in my previous video, but you can clamp your phone on here at night, and this is my entertainment center. So pop my phone in there at night, can watch YouTube videos, and yeah, another thing that makes living in a van like this for an extended period of time a little bit more like home, a little more livable. I do have this Sony Bluetooth speaker here. This is the SRS 550, I believe. I've had this thing for a while and it bumps. It's a really nice speaker, super solid. I actually dented my countertop, which you can sort of see right here. Because the first week I had my van, I had it up here, drove into the mountains and it fell out. Dumb mistake to make and now I don't put anything up here except for food and some items that aren't heavy. They're not gonna be able to fall out and dent or mess up anything down here. I also got some new cookware, which you saw me using this morning. This is super important, especially when you're working on an induction cooktop here. My initial mistake with this thing was I got pots and pans that were way too big. I had like a 10 inch skillet, I believe. And what's cool about induction cooktops is that one, you have to have the right materials. It has to be a certain magnetic stainless steel on the bottom to actually transfer the heat. But these are super efficient. You can boil water very quickly quickly with relatively low power. And this is only going to heat up the pan to the actual size of the pan. So if I have a little tiny four inch like egg pan here, it's only going to heat up that area. So I of course downsized to something like this and it works very well. I also got a spoonula. It's a spoon slash spatula. I use this thing to make a grilled cheese sandwich last night. I use it to make some eggs this morning and it's sort of like a spatula. So it works to flip things, but also a spoon. So trying to stay pretty minimal here. I've also got a pot down here. have not used this thing yet, but maybe tonight I'll cook some macaroni or spaghetti or something like that. 
I know initially I said I wasn't going to be cooking in here because when I did cook in here for the first time, I was not connected to power and I used the stove for longer than I probably should have. I made like a full meal of jambalaya with a bunch of rice and spices and I also grilled up some sausages. So I had that stove top running for a while. It worked fine. I still had enough battery to last me through the night. And I mean, when you drive this thing, it's going to recharge. When the sun's out, the solar is charging the batteries as well. But now I'm actually back to cooking in here and I'm keeping things super simple like grilled cheese and macaroni and cheese. You can heat up leftovers if you want to. Basically small meals like that where you don't have to have the stove top running very long. The rain is starting to come down now, which is not good. I wanna show you guys another thing that I mentioned in a previous video that I didn't really have a use for, but now I found the best use for it. Back here underneath the bed where I have all of the storage, I mentioned this outlet right here. I was like, hmm, what could you plug in there? Maybe like a leaf blower or something? This is perfect for my one wheel. I'm constantly taking this thing in and out of the van, especially cruising around at a place like this campground that I'm at right now. So now, especially while I'm connected to power, I don't really have to reserve anything. I can leave my one wheel plugged in here and have this thing charging whenever I'm not riding it. So for the most part, this one wheel XR plus charger is going to be living right here in this outlet and I'm basically going to leave it there full time. When this bug screen at the bottom is buttoned and then zipped all the way down, the right side of it does not have a button. So if I want to pull my one wheel out, simply zip that up and then I have access to that right there. Now, of course, I've done videos on the one wheel in the past, but this is something that is super important to me because it very much is a last mile vehicle. Not only will it take me about 18 miles from wherever I park my van, but it's also really fun to just kind of cruise around and take in the sights of whatever area you're at. This rain is really starting to come down now. Luckily, I'm under the trees. Before it starts raining really hard, let me take you guys down this trail here and show you where I'm actually at. Maybe I didn't pick the best time to do this. Well, here we are. I got the van parked right off of the water and I'm actually at a place called Lake Alatuna. There are a ton of campgrounds around this lake and I happen to find one that is probably the nicest and also the busiest. There are a ton of people here, but luckily, depending on which site you get, you do have a little bit of privacy because there's a lot of tree cover around. Obviously, you can't see really anyone else here with me. This rain is really coming down now. The campground that I'm at right now has two different sites. They have a premium and then like a standard. So right now I'm paying a little over 20 bucks a night, probably like $25 a night to have this whole spot completely to myself. And I know I said I really wasn't a fan of going to campgrounds and stuff like that, but I actually really dig this. This is a nice spot. The premium version of one of these sites would have cost a little bit more about like 32 to $35. And then the only difference with those spots is that it puts you right along along the water. This to me is close enough. I don't need to be like throwing things from my van into the lake. So yeah, this is going to be home for the next couple of days. That awning is dripping water right now. Maybe I should get inside for now. So here's also something that I mentioned in my initial van overview that I really have not had a chance to show you guys, but that is how this thing does in the rain. Like I mentioned in that video, all of these windows, once they are open, they pop outwards, sort of like you can see here. That goes for these two windows and also the one back in the bedroom. And because of that, you can leave these windows open while it's raining. Another thing you can have open is the exhaust vent up here. So that thing is pretty much constantly running when I'm in here. And what it does is just has a fan that spins up and sucks the air up and out the back. That thing is covered as well, so it is dumping outside right now. Hopefully this rain actually stops here in a little bit, but I can have this van completely open and ventilated while it's raining and nothing in here is getting wet. Super nice touch. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do for the rest of the day now. I was planning on taking the one wheel out around the lake. However, I'm kind of stuck here now. I guess I could always edit some more videos and cook some lunch as well. We got some chicken and shrimp and broccoli, carrots, rice, zucchini, 
mushrooms, eggs. It's like a gourmet meal sitting here inside of a van. All right guys, well that rain really put a damper on the day. It rained for maybe like four hours and I just kind of sat inside, hung out, worked a little bit on videos and took a nap. Now it's starting to dry up just a little bit. I'm running to throw this trash away at the central building at this campground. It's a lot brighter when you're not in the trees. Now for the rest of the night, a few of my friends are starting to kind of trickle into town for Blade Show this weekend. Also, I have some friends that live here already and some business owners, things like that. Some people that I want to connect with because I'm not down here very often. So I'm gonna go back to the van, sort of clean things up and get things ready for tonight because I'm probably gonna get picked up and we're probably gonna go out downtown somewhere. I won't be bringing you guys for that, but I will keep you up to date on everything else that we have going on. Now you guys can see what the van sort of looks like at night. Not completely dark right now, but there you got the lighting from the awning on the top and then the footboards. There's lighting that runs all underneath here. And then of course the inside is all lit up. But you pretty much saw this already. I'll probably end up doing some more vlog type of videos like this, definitely regarding the van. So if there's anything that you guys want to see, like a full gear dump, I know I showed you a couple of the things that I brought with me to make my life a little bit easier. But maybe if you guys like these videos enough, I will do a complete gear dump and show you every little thing step by step that I have in all these drawers and all my camera equipment up here. There's definitely a lot of stuff going on here and hopefully you guys like seeing something new. This is very new to me. This is probably very new to a lot of you as well. And I'm really excited to see where I'm going to take this thing. Like I said, I'm gonna be on the road for another like month and a half yet. I've only been on the road now for a couple weeks, but I'm digging it. There's a lot of cool stuff coming down the line. I got a lot of videos filmed that I'm working on right now and those will be trickling out over the next couple of weeks. I'm stoked and I hope you guys are too. So I think that's it for now. If you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week and that's going to be all for today. So as always, thanks for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.